What are the installation steps for a waterproofing membrane? There are six major steps when installing a waterproofing membrane. First, surface preparation. Second, joint treatment. Third, primer application. Fourth, membrane application. Fifth, testing. And last, protection layer. Before every step, we need to plan to ensure the work is done correctly and in the right sequence. Planning is necessary for all steps, and it involves activities like checking the weather, planning resources, and scheduling work sequence. For example, wet weather can impact the quality of the work at all stages, leading to membrane or primer adhesion issues. Or not having enough material supply, such as the primer or liquid membrane, would lead to coverage issues, resulting in a lower thickness membrane or compromised waterproofing system performance. Now, let's look at the detail of each step, starting with surface preparation. Surface preparation is a critical component of the membrane system, since poor preparation will lead to eventual membrane failure. It involves activities that assist with the adhesion of the waterproofing membrane to the substrate and flexibility allowance for the membrane. For example, grinding down to create an acceptable bonding surface and remove curing compounds is a common activity required as part of the preparation stage. Cleaning dust after grinding is also a crucial part of the preparation, since dust can cause surface contamination and adhesion issues. Another crucial part of the substrate preparation is detailing around the perimeter of the wet area where there is no wall. Water stop angles should be installed to extend the membrane vertically. Water stops are mostly aluminium or stainless steel angles that allow for the membrane extension to the vertical face and create a fully isolated wet area. Without this, moisture can penetrate to the adjacent area. Let's look at the next step, the joint treatment. Joint treatment is required at sharp corners, edges, or joints within the substrate of the waterproofed area. Since these create a weak spot for a membrane to tear. So they must be treated to allow the membrane to bridge over the critical area. Joint treatment mainly involves applying fillets across the joint or installation of specified products to allow membrane bridging. Using sealants or fillets is a common type of joint treatment done at the perimeter of a wet area, including the water stops. Bond breaker tape can also be used to treat these areas to allow for more flexibility and better accommodate the movement of the substrate, especially when more rigid sheet membranes are specified. Bond breaker tapes create an unbonded length for the membrane, allowing it to stretch across the unbonded length rather than tear when elements across the joints move at different rates. The next step is primer application. Primer is a liquid coat applied to the substrate, generally by roller or brush. Do you know the reason why primer is applied? Primer provides a layer applied to the substrate to bind the surface and improve membrane adhesion. It's an essential part of the waterproofing system, as the substrate could consist of various materials. For example, a concrete balcony with PVC pipes, metal pipe and masonry wall. Regardless of the materials underneath, the primer creates a bonding surface for the membrane to ensure correct adhesion. Not only that, but also the primer improves membrane adhesion as most liquid membrane viscosity is high, so it may be unable to penetrate the surface and may not adhere directly to the substrate. But the primer can fully penetrate and bond to the substrate, ensuring proper adhesion of the waterproofing membrane to the substrate. There are different types of primers, and the type of primer used will not only depend on the substrate material, such as concrete, steel, or wood, but also the membrane type being applied, such as liquid or sheet. 
For example, a solvent-based primer is used for bitumen sheet membrane over the concrete substrate, whilst a water-based acrylic primer may be used for liquid membrane on a concrete slab. Now let's look at the next step, application of the waterproofing membrane. Basically, we apply the waterproofing membrane to stop moisture migration from one side to another. And this can be in both vertical or horizontal applications. One thing, it's important to note the time between primer and membrane application, as this may differ depending on the membrane type and climate conditions. For example, when using a solvent-based primer, the membrane is generally applied within 12 hours, subject to ambient temperature and humidity. Otherwise, the primer coat would need to be reactivated or reapplied. Always refer to the manufacturer's specification for these requirements. Now let's look at the membrane types. The waterproofing membrane can be either a sheet or a liquid layer made of various chemical compositions and materials. Membrane type and thickness are selected to suit a particular application. For example, a sheet membrane, like a bitumen sheet, can be used for an area with higher waterproofing risks, like a roof. On the other hand, a liquid membrane can be used for an area with complicated geometry, or adjoining elements. Note that liquid membranes are often applied in multiple coats to achieve a higher thickness. It is crucial to understand that a new coat has to be applied after the previous coat is cured. Otherwise, it could lead to membrane bubbling or gassing off. The next step is to verify the membrane's correct thickness, adhesion and integrity by testing. There are various testing methods which could be carried out during the waterproofing membrane application or post-application of the membrane. For example, the wet film thickness is used to measure the uncured liquid membrane thickness during the application. This is a critical test. Since most liquid membranes have lower dry film thickness compared to wet film thickness, once water or solvent inside the membrane has evaporated, so to achieve a minimum dry thickness, the appropriate wet film thickness needs to be applied. While a flood test is a post-application test used to check the membrane integrity throughout. All right, now let's look at the final step, applying the protection layer. Finally, to ensure the membrane is not damaged prior to finishes being applied, or to provide membrane protection for an unfinished area, a protection layer needs to be used. These protection layers could be physical temporary elements, like plywood or plastic sheets, which will be removed before the installation of finishes. On the other hand, a permanent protective layer may be required to protect the membrane against UV and traffic where the membrane remains exposed. For example, a combination of an epoxy coating layer plus a broadcasting sand layer applied over the liquid polyurethane membrane after it is cured can protect it from UV, foot traffic and provide improved slip resistance. Another example is where an embedded granular coating is used as the top layer in a torch-on membrane sheet to protect it against UV and foot traffic. Note that these protection layers may have a shorter lifespan compared to the membrane and need to be maintained or reapplied during the lifetime of the building, as is the case with most epoxy top coats. See you in the next video. Teletraining makes the most practical content for the quality construction industry.